uh, Space to Ground are we on? It will be Space to Ground 2, yeah. Up and down on Space to Ground 2. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station, station, we're as, uh, we're as ready as can be for the event. European Space Agency, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. A voice check. A voice check. A voice check. Hello, hello, uh, Thomas, this is Toulouse. Bonjour. Can you hear us? I can hear you five by five. How can you hear me? Bonjour, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Thomas Pesquet. Hello, Tom, uh, Pesquet. I hope you're well. Yeah, very well, thank you. Well, listen, we're very happy that you're with us this afternoon. In the name of all the students who are here with the uh, Space City and all of France and who will ask you questions. But uh, in this connection, I have right next to you uh, an older student whom you know well because you personally know you studied uh, together. He was also, if you've known a professional, because he is in charge of all of the experiments, French experiments uh, in the mission, and who has uh, just presented to us uh, Mr. Remy Conton. Hello, Thomas. How are you doing? Glad to see you. Hello uh, to everyone. You know, we're going to begin right away with the questions. We'll start with Henrik. First question, Henrik. Hello, Thomas. Is he I'm at uh, the Rive Gauche in Toulouse, uh, last year's student. This is the third uh, time that I'm meeting you this way. And uh, I also see where you've posted a lot of photographs uh, during the night. And the question I have is the following. Have you noticed uh, the uh, uh, evolution of, uh, of uh, pollution since you've been up there and started your mission? Well, this is a good question. It's something that, uh, in terms of scientific uh, work, I think I've seen something, but it really requires uh, observations over a period of years. Listen, evolution of pollution, I think, is in the United States is very luminous or lit up. It's hard to say between 2017, but in any case, what is certain is that with all of the lights that we have, uh, it's sort of hard to see that at night. Hello, Thomas. I am Marie. I am on uh, second year in the Repair School of in Toulouse and with uh, thousands of students in France. Can you tell us about your exper uh, experiments? As as an ex or your experiences as an astronaut? What advice would you have? What uh, advice could you give us? Well, the advice is it's already happened to me during the first uh, mission. I uh, had some experiments that didn't go very well. But as I mentioned before to the students, uh, regarding a, a project of this nation, uh, nature, it's important. You have to be very rigorous and uh, disciplined in your studies, and uh, you have to really prepare yourself to conclude all of the work that you need to do uh, in a scientific sense, especially. And this is what's most important to prepare yourself for space. Hello, 
My name is Leanne, and I'm in the third school at the Louis uh, Pasteur uh, High School in Trio. Can different plants uh, grow uh, in the uh, space station? I'd like to know, uh, we're asking this so that we can know about diversity in space. Well, that's a good question. You can, in fact, grow plants within the ESS, but they grow better in the natural environment. And so what you do on land, you have uh, earth and all of the elements for growing plants. And so it's difficult to do so here in space. With, uh, we don't have solar light, we have artificial light. And so this complicates things uh, compared to land, the earth. What we would like to see uh, today in the space station is that uh, we don't have any other choice. However, we will be required to grow uh, plants uh, within our space stations. It's something that we're not doing currently in the space station. Hello, Thomas. This is Suzette. In the first uh, year of high school, Degvart uh, Lazila. You've spoken to us about your work the, on the Amazonian forest. Now listen, this is a, a region in which uh, there's a lot of rain, it's a very green forest. Often it's covered by uh, clouds, hard to observe sometimes. There's certain places where we can see that where the forest has been cleared away and people are out there uh, creating fields and uh, sometimes deforestation is very obvious from up here. But now we see that there's very uh, major deforestation programs. Uh, it looks as if it was uh, cut uh, through the forest uh, with a razor, which is uh, we can conclude about uh, that the removal of the forest, which is very important for us, uh, for the green lung of the planet. Hello, Thomas. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Marie. And at the Marie Curie uh, High School, here's my question. Do you do recycling aboard the ESS, and how do you do it? Yes, we recycle, evidently. We have a, an enclosed environment. Aboard the ESS, you have to be able to eat and to drink and to have uh, usable water. Uh, and so we try to get the maximum use of everything that's aboard. Uh, so we collect everything, whether it's um, uh, toilet water, we treat it, we re-inject it into, uh, and convert it into potable water, drinkable water. Uh, and so at 80% uh, uh, purification. Increasingly, we try to recycle what we brought along with us. Uh, in space, things are uh, wrapped up in uh, wrapping to protect it when they bring it to space. That includes food and other items. And so we try to, uh, we don't want to have a useless uh, wrapping. Uh, and so we try to use that in a, a board. And at the same time, beyond that, we would like to be able to. Uh, convert this uh, mass of, uh, of uh, discarded items, trash. And so this is something that uh, we're working at trying to expand our use of uh, recycled Bonjour wrapping. <coughs> Hello, Thomas. I'm Leon. I'm in the, at the uh, uh, third year five at the clash. I'd like to know how do you see the um, change of climate aboard the space station? What no changes have you noticed between 2017 or 2021? Well, thank you. It's a good question. Listen, in effect, I'd already noticed the negative uh, consequences uh, of climate change. I noticed uh, in 2017 and again in 2021. I don't really see any improvements but uh, we conduct scientific experiments to enable us to take a scientific perspective of what the changes are so that we can have confidence in our uh, conclusions, regardless of whether it's me or anyone else uh, doing the work. But 
the uh, frequency of tropical storms is something we've noticed. Uh, that's more often today than before. This, I really have the f impression that there's a greater uh, frequency of tornadoes and uh, cyclones. Uh, space, from space, we can see a uh, direct consequence of the uh, forces at work. These are consequences uh, on a climatic scale that are unfortunately are very noticeable you know, from space as well. Hello, my name is Amira from the Georges Sand uh, College or High School in Toulouse. Can you tell us what you have been able to observe uh, during uh, from the major forest fires uh, this summer? What have you been able to observe in that regard? Listen, it was these were uh, sad uh, uh, spectacles. You can see it, of course, clearly from the space station. And so we see a lot of white clouds. Uh, the clouds are never uh, white. They're usually uh, uh, white, but in this case, we see that they're brown and various other colors. And so we can very clearly see the difference between the uh, smoke from fires and uh, uh, natural clouds. In the, uh, Turkey and the Mediterranean, the United States and France and Corsica, California, Canada, it made a huge impression. They were uh, surfaces that were uh, being burned were immense in scope. It's like a uh, cover of uh, ashes or uh, smoke, which covers almost all of California, at least half of California from uh, land. We can see a little bit, uh, but from space, you can clearly see the extent of the uh, smoke of the uh, cloud, which is brown and covers an entire region. And you can see it very clearly. And unfortunately, this is something we've been able to observe. Hello, Thomas. I'm Louis from the François Mitterrand High School in Moissac. Can you see the great uh, coral uh, bar barrier from the uh, space station? And if so, have you been able to notice changes from 2017? The Great Barrier Reef. You listen, we see it. It's part of the things that we can see uh, from uh, the space station uh, in Australia, of course. There's something that we see. It looks like little little circles. There's sort of clear blue. It's not like atolls, but it's uh, fairly similar to the atolls. We can see it sufficiently. It's covered with, uh, from Australia, I've been able to observe. When we pass over uh, Australia, most of the time we can see it. Uh, of course, at night uh, we can't see it as well. Uh, but it's not something that we don't do as often, as, uh, unfortunately. But we can take the measure, uh, including scientific measurements uh, and evaluations from uh, above the satellite. We can conclude that this is something that gives us uh, confidence in our observation. And I can uh, add my vision of things. If this is a uh, to add a, a guarantee of a spatial, uh, spatially determined uh, scientific observations. And this is something that can be measured uh, and seen, uh, measured with specialized equipment, and uh, which unfortunately gives us uh, confidence in uh, any deterioration. Hello, Thomas. This is Abdallah from Toulouse. Can you tell us about this experiment, uh, if you please? Yes, Abdallah. This is an experiment which is very fascinating. It's microscopic uh, scale and which applies to uh, everything, if you may say it's uh, from the exterior, outside of the ESS, uh, from 200 uh, to 250 degrees uh, outside the space. But they were able to survive, and uh, we don't know how they do it, but we try to observe uh, how they do outside in that cold, uh, how they're able to, to uh, deploy capacity capabilities to survive. It's incredible. But this adaptation to space is something that could uh, be transmitted or to other organisms that could adapt. And this is something that we uh, find that the uh, over distances and uh, in difficult conditions on Earth, uh, this is what we're looking for on the microscopic and microbial uh, scale to be able to uh, then run our experiments. So. Hello, Thomas. 
I'm a Nick. I'm in the second class, uh, second year at uh, at the Ramar School in Toulouse. Uh, you've been on the, uh, let's see, the space station uh, performing for two days. What does that to consist of? Well, I'm not sure I understood the question. Excuse me. She had asked you, I bet to ask you. You've been running experiments of, uh, aboard the space station for two days. What do they consist of? Well, thank you for the question. It's a little bit like uh, being aboard uh, when everything, uh, you have to uh, work with the interface uh, with the people who work at the control center uh, to be sure that uh, I'm uh, well in good condition. Uh, I participate in the uh, decisions of the exchange of information. It runs rather well. Sometimes there are major directions, uh, directives that are given, and we above the uh, space station aboard it uh, in a professional manner uh, implement those. Sometimes there's only a general consensus to look to be sure that we are in, a, in agreement. This is within the uh, framework of everything going well, but if there are problems like uh, breakdowns or f fires, uh, this is as if we were aboard a boat. There's only one person who can make decisions then because if things are complicated, we want to be sure that we don't have problems that stem from people being uh, in disagreement, and so there's someone that has to make decisions. And we hope that we'll always be able to apply uh, and make decisions that uh, we hope that everything will always run well, but when they don't, we have to be sure that things can be remain under control even under adverse conditions. Hello, Thomas. I'm Charles D. Um, I'm in the Casavidi High School. I'd like to ask you, since you're no longer breathing earthly atmosphere, would you say that uh, certain uh, uh, features are more dangerous for you? That's a very good question. Uh, radiation doses uh, are able to... Uh, uh, hit the space station, and of course we need protection against that. Uh, since we no longer have the earthly atmosphere to protect us against space uh, radiation, in the space station we're very high up, of course, and between uh, one to two, 100 to 200 th times the uh, dose of radiation that we uh, receive on land is what we receive on the space station. And there are people who uh, monitor us, but you know, there are problems that uh, arise uh, that will arise on the trip to Mars, a very long trip, and we will have radiation to contend with uh, to be sure that the radiation levels are not too high. And so this is something we're trying to resolve in order to be able to travel to Mars. There are experiments that uh, regard to as to how to measure radiation doses and how to protect us, uh, the astronauts who, in general, who someday will be able to um, take uh, longer space trips. Hello, Thomas. My name is Mohamed from the uh, Georges Autant College, from the George Sand uh, High School in Toulouse. You've made three extra vehicular uh, Xs to be able to change ESS panels. What are the next uh, upcoming operations that you uh, are looking forward to? Well, listen, there are four in all. We have to put. Uh, there are two that uh, I will be making. It's more complicated than we thought. Uh, sometimes it can take the entire day uh, outside the uh, space station, the ESS. And then we had prepared, we added two additional uh, solar pa panels, and then uh, there are four other new ones uh, installed by my colleagues outside the station. You know, there's always something to do. We replaced also the uh, uh, electrical panels that are in this part of the station. Uh, there's some cables that we have to change. We have to change cameras. There are always things to do. And the upcoming operations will resemble somewhat what we've done. And they're continually adding solar panels to, that have to be installed. And uh, we'll be using the systems uh, that uh, require a lot of cable installation. And so that is what we're looking forward to. Well, we've arrived at the uh, end of the session, but I think we will not be able to complete this without thanking you again, Tomas. All of us here would like to thank you. We'd like to applaud you, to thank you for all these questions. Happy to see you again, and look forward to seeing you again on Earth here at the space station in Toulouse. 
and we are anticipating with great uh, eagerness to see you again. To thank you once again for all of your kindness for the time that you've spent with us. You'll be returning, uh, perhaps uh, that some operations uh, to complete before you return. There are a lot of things. Uh, there are visitors that we have to deal with. My German uh, colleague, for example. It will be a great uh, pleasure to come back and see you in Toulouse once I return. Thank you. Thanks again. Goodbye. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from ISA at Toulouse. Uh, merci tout le monde à Toulouse. Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications.